Hello, welcome to another episode of Hanging Out with Pauline. My name is Paula and I'm the editor of Motherhood in Style magazine, your one step magazine for all things family and parenting. My first vlog and the last vlog generated a lot of feedback and I was very thrilled. Thank you for reaching out to me. Thank you for those who took the time to share their own personal experiences with me. It was so refreshing to hear from you. Keep tuning in regularly to see if you will find a new post. I mean, this is new for me. I'm still getting used to it. But I will make efforts to always put up a new vlog every week. So today I'm going to be talking about the seven times that I've cried as a mom. Yes, I know, another depressing, not depressing, not going to be as depressing as you think. It's something that we're going to laugh about now. Then it didn't sound funny, but now we can all laugh about it. And I think these are circumstances that I think that you'll be able to relate to. The first one was when I was told that I was going to have a C-section. Look at me already prepping to have a natural birth. And then the doctor tells me you're going to have a C-section. Why? Because I have preeclampsia, high blood pressure, and it's protein in my, my urine. And it was totally unadvisable to have a normal delivery. I had to have a C-section immediately. But, of course, I didn't take the news well. <laughs> I cried. I wailed. Because then I used to think that, oh, having uh, a vaginal birth was the ideal thing to do and anything else was unacceptable but I don't think like that anymore because the truth is in the end what is important is having a healthy child and a healthy mother not caring whether it was a vaginal birth or it was a c-section that is insignificant what matters is to have mother and child happy and alike in the end the second time motherhood made me cry was when I realized that I wasn't going to get back into my pre-pregnancy outfits in a breeze. This was three weeks after I had delivered my baby. <laughs> and I don't know who told me that. I'll just wake up one morning and shove my maternity clothes aside and sleep on my jeans. Man, I was in for a shock. As I wore my jeans that day, gosh, I wailed. I couldn't get through. I couldn't get myself into my jeans. My jeans couldn't go past my thighs. And I wept, I wailed, I lamented. And then to top it off, I went into a depression. Postpartum depression or baby blues if you like. I was just sad, wondering how did I get here? Is this what parenting does to you? Is this what motherhood does to you? It just changes my body just like that. Going from a size 10 to a size 16, I was totally unhappy. And my midwife came to the house when she came I told her, she was like, what's wrong with you? Why are you looking so sad? Why are you so unhappy? I busted into another season of tears and cried and told her, no, how did I get here? What am I going to do? I can't live like this. What's going to happen to all the clothes that I have? Do I have to start buying new sets of clothes to accommodate my new size? I was so unhappy. But then, it's not about crying, it's not about wailing and lamenting, it's about doing what you can about it. And I took responsibility, started eating right, checking what I was eating, even though I was breastfeeding, I had to ensure that I was healthy for my baby and healthy for me. So it was both ways. And in time, I was able to get back to my pre-pregnancy size. Then the third time was discovering that my daughter's kidney was in a unique shape. It wasn't in the regular shape. One was in its hot sauce size. And we were referred to do a diagnostic center to do uh, to run some tests. When I saw them place her in the CT scan, I cried. I just felt it was unfair to have a newborn baby, you know, placed in a CT scan. She was just too young. I mean, what offense has she committed? You know how mothers are now, you just get all emotional. And then I cried, I stopped, I was like, my poor baby, she's just been born and she has to go through, I mean, it was no harm, it was just me being a mom, just crying. <laughs> Sometimes you cry for the silliest reason, I mean, there was no need for me to cry, but I chose to get all emotional and there I was, 
cry. <laughs> anyway, that passed. Another time was when I think that we were traveling and one of my children was ill. That must have been my son. So I had packed his drugs. It was really temperature and I think he must have had malaria or something like that. And he had to be taken to his medicines periodically. And you know how moms are. I packed all these drugs in my hand luggage. Now, this, the airports and the airlines have their rules, especially the airports, they have their rules. We had gone past the Nigerian airport and we had landed, I think it must have been in Shiphol Airport or in, I can't remember, one of those airports, we had landed in an airport in Europe. And the custom officer there collected the drugs from me and thrashed it. He didn't listen to my explanation that the drugs were for my baby who was ill. It just trashed everything, all the drugs. He wasn't interested in my explanation and it just thrashed, threw them away, took them from me and threw them away. All like he muttered at him. I faced him. I faced him and I told him, who do you think you are? If anything happens to my baby, if anything happens to my baby, and I went and I wept and I wailed and I cried. <laughs> like that was gonna change anything. No, but it was very hurtful. That one annoyed me. That one upset me. I was really angry because it was quite insensitive of him not listening to me, but just, oh, these are the rules, but just saying, these are the rules, madame, you can't take these drugs. And then he thrashed them. What if something had happened to my child and my child's life was depending on the drugs, you know? Now that got me really angry. We'll do anything for my kids. we we'll get all emotional when it concerns our children, wouldn't we? So that was the fourth time. Have you ever had to teach your child numeracy and find out that you couldn't somehow pass your message across? You know, the thing is, in schools, they have modern ways of teaching them. And then we still have our old school ways of, you know, learning and grasping a concept. And then I had this time that I had to teach my daughter a particular concept and she just wasn't getting it <laughs> I had tried I was trying very hard I here was I trying really trying really being patient really enduring and you know putting myself in check so I wouldn't just bust out and do what was wrong you know you know like knock her head knock the thing right into her head or pull her ears call her names or something you know and she just didn't get it and I didn't know how to pass the concept across to her but I knew I had to but I just didn't know how I was so overwhelmed with emotions and it would have been silly for me to just stay there and cry I just rushed to my room because I didn't want to abuse her I didn't want to call her names I didn't want to hit her head I mean that would have been a lose-lose situation but I was frustrated and you know most times as parents, that's what we tend to do. Most times we smack and we hit our children. It's because we don't know how to deal with our frustrations. And so we lash out. And I knew that that would have been totally wrong. Not that I didn't feel like doing it. I felt like, <laughs> I felt like knocking sense into our head. But it wouldn't have helped. So what I did was I just ran to my room and I cried. I cried. I said, God help me. What is happening? Why? So she gets in it. Help me, help me pass this. No, I just prayed. I was just praying and crying. <laughs> Thinking about this is even making me tear now. But that's what happened, you know. I'm sure some parents can relate to this. Shouting and smacking and hitting and cussing doesn't work. It's a lose lose situation. And I didn't know how to handle it, but I knew one thing for sure was I had to control myself. And that with time, she would learn the concept you want to understand the concept it's not by smacking or shouting or hitting or knocking that would be terribly wrong but i was just so emotional then and the best thing i could do was cry i had to run to my room to cry For the sixth time the motherhood made me cry was when i got a call from my son's school nurse informing me that my son elia had banged his head against the concrete and she had taken him to the sick bay, put him to sleep. And when he woke up two hours after, he was acting funny. That's what she said. Those were her words. That Elia is acting funny. Gosh, what would a mother do? 
I just went on this thing. I asked her, when did this happen? She said about two hours ago. And then I got angry. And you are telling me now, this happened two hours ago. Why didn't you tell me earlier? She said she had to watch him. I said to her, with due respect, madam, are you a doctor? Why didn't you call me earlier for me to make whatever decision I thought was best for my son? Why did you keep him? So I called my husband immediately, told my husband to go to the doctor. I told the nurse to get the, my son to the hospital that was at the sudden at that time. And the hospital was closer to the school. I was further away. I rushed out of the sudden like a mad woman. I ran out of the sand and before I ran out I was crying God I hope nothing happens to my son every time I cry I go to God who else am I gonna go to <laughs> this God eh? he just takes everything that we dump on him he just hears he just listens but I cried all the way to the hospital only to get to the hospital I found my husband there with my son he was already there for me and he had he had my son in his arms my son was sleeping peacefully. They had conducted an x-ray and nothing happened. He was fine. He was just totally fine. He had a small concussion. But that was it. But it was fine. But you see how we just cry. <laughs> well, I'm one of those who cry. I can cry. Cry when it has to do with my my kids. I'm not a cry cry baby like that. But, but at times I just let the floodgates open and the tears just start to, to run. Yeah, so the seventh time would be when I heard news of a family friend who was involved in a ghastly, very cool accident with her family. Her son, her daughter, and her nanny. She only had two kids, and they were both in the car. And it was, it was fatal because she lost her 13-year-old son. Her daughter was in coma. Her nanny was in coma. And she sustained a broken leg. Gosh, when I heard that news that fateful morning, I wept for days. Every day I remembered her, I wept. I imagined her pain, her loss, her grief. I grieved. I cried and wept uncontrollably. I didn't want to be pacified. What could we tell her? What could you possibly say to her that would make sense? What could you say to her that would pacify her? I couldn't even talk to her because I had nothing to say to her. I could only pray. I could just only pray for her. I mean, that's the ultimate price everyone has to pay with their lives. And the young man, 13-year-old promising boy, he was a child to have. He was a child that would make any mother, any father happy. And he just passed away like that in that manner. Oh no, I wept. I wept for days. I wept for days. No. But anyway, they say time has a way of dulling that kind of pain. And I pray that she she she's able to get over it. And I pray that um, God who comforts everyone will be able to comfort her in every possible way. Thank you for listening and thank you for viewing in. Please don't forget to get in touch with me. Find how to contact us on our screen. Till next time, it's goodbye from me. Bye.